perfectionism and failure. That's the conversation we're going to have here today on Relationship Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, the reason we're going to I'm bringing those two topics together is because to me, they cross paths. And by that, I'm saying a lot of times if you don't equal what's perfect, in other words, somebody has an agenda, they have a plan that they've put in place. And if it doesn't follow that exact plan, then they say it didn't go perfectly. Or some people would look at it and say because it didn't go perfectly, their version of that would be it failed. Or um, because the fact that it, it, it didn't turn out even close to what uh, the people thought it would be, then they call it a failure. We say that about people. We'll look at them and say that they're not perfect and that we'll all, we're all going to always fall short. Um, and for me personally, I tell people you are perfect. You were born perfect. You will always be perfect. Why do I say that? is because everything you need to survive here on the earth, you're already equipped with. So therefore, you are perfect. The challenge comes when we link what people do to them as a person. And you guys always hear me say, that's why I tell you love is accepting a uh, person, place, or thing just the way it is. When you can separate people from what they do, then I can love you and not agree with the things that you do. Um, that's the same way I look at it, perfection. You as an individual are perfect. You are totally equipped. You came here totally equipped. You can make the adjustments uh, in any situation that, that comes across. You can make adjustments when things don't go according to plan. And that's what allows you to be perfect as a human being is because we have that ability to adjust when things don't go the way as planned which a lot of people call as uh, a failure. I personally don't use the word failure. I never look at anything as, as failure, but I do look at things like, um, you guys may have heard me use the analogy of making a cake. If you make a cake at a certain um, temperature, you put in certain ingredients, you put it in a certain pan, let's say the pan has a dent in it, when the cake is through, finished, then a person says, well, it's not perfect because the fact is it has a dent in it. And they may consider that to be a failure because it didn't turn out. Maybe it didn't taste the way you wanted it. Well, again, I don't look at life that way. I said, first off, it is perfect because if you put the same cake at the same temperature, same ingredients, everything is identical, the cake will come out identical. That means it's perfect. You have found the path to get this particular result, this particular cake. You've already figured out now what's the path to get in. That's perfect. Now, what you get to decide is, but is it the result that you want it? And if you don't like that particular result, then you can make adjustments. The same thing why I said when people say failure, people can look at that cake and call it, it's a failure. It, it didn't taste right. It wasn't sweet enough. And, and I don't look at it that way. I said, what it did is you again, can you imagine the first cake that a person made whenever the first cake was made? I'm pretty sure it didn't come out what we call perfect. And the person could have ran around and said, it was a failure. Or what the person can say, it was perfect. It came out exactly the way it was supposed to come out based on the ingredients I put in. But because I didn't like the way it, it turned out, now I can add other stuff to it. I can add more sugar. I can maybe turn the temperature up or down. You know what I mean? I mean, you guys get what I'm saying. I add another egg. But, but you make the adjustments. That's what you do in life. Again, that's why I don't use the word failure, because to me, it falls in the same category. It's things didn't go the way it's planned, but you had to do something. That's why people say I failed in my life. No, I didn't. I've never failed personally. That's the way I look at it. I've never failed. Now, it is true. There are things in my life that didn't go the way I planned it. And in some instances, I'm grateful 
that it didn't go the way that I planned it because it actually came out better than my plan. See, the challenge is we think we're so smart that we got this all figured out. And the key is, in a lot of instances, good, you don't know the best plan because it can come out better if you're open to and not being afraid of what people call failure are the, the words you guys know everybody loves to use is fear. Uh, you got to overcome your fear. And, and again, you guys have heard me say that before too. Fear is never, ever a person's problem. Never, ever, never, ever. You know how many times I got to say that? Never, ever. Because fear is an emotion. It's a description of an emotion, I should say. But you guys have known I talked about the steps that we go through because we control of our, our emotions. So if you control your emotions and your emotions are, are basically created because of stories that you wrote, in order to address the emotions, I have to go back to the story. So that tells me if, if fear is an emotion, then the way I address emotions is by the stories that I wrote. So fear is not my problem. It's the story that I wrote and I have to go back, vi visit that story and rewrite it in a way that I will feel differently. And so I don't want to get back in because you guys know I got videos on that. So you can go back and look where I really go into detail on fear because, again, I never believe that's a person's issue. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is, is this topic about perfection, because, again, I believe we're all perfect. The challenge is when we get into the comparing, when we do as human beings, um, we see the media, how they are, they'll tell you that this is the way a person is supposed to look. This is ideal. This is the perfect woman. Um, I always laugh every year. It, it seems like uh, every single year, well, it don't seem like, but every single year, somebody is in the magazine as the, the, the most handsome man in the world or the most beautiful woman in the world. And then next year, somebody else. I don't understand how this happens and where these polls are coming from because first off, how are you the best, most handsome person this year and then next year you're not? Did, did you lose your appeal? Did all of a sudden somebody that was in the back that nobody knew about all of a sudden stepped up? Now it's like, oh, we didn't know they were alive. And it's like, they're better looking than you. So now they're the most handsome. And now that most importantly, we all know it's all in the eyes of the beholder to begin with. The person who wrote that article may think the person is handsome to them. Doesn't mean that they're handsome to the, to everyone else. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people buy into the media and let the media make their decisions for them. And they'll all of a sudden, just like we know there are certain stars that become sex symbols, that we all know that if they didn't have money and they weren't in the media, they wouldn't be considered sex symbols. So the media can make you look like a sex symbol, just as the media will tell you what perfection looks like. And then the challenge and the reason, again, I'm talking about that today is because what happens is you let people tell you what perfection looks like. And then you start to judge yourself according to those standards. And because of the fact that you don't meet those standards that someone else designed, now you start to talk badly about yourself and you say, well, I'm not perfect and, and look at all my flaws and look at folks, stop that. You are perfect. And I always say that and I will always say that. I, and this is not a spiritual conversation because I know people will come at me with, you know, according to the Bible or it's, this is not that kind of conversation, okay? You are perfect and don't allow anyone else to tell you. Now, again, with that said, that doesn't mean there are decisions because of where your life is that you want that you don't want to make different decisions so that you can get different results. You know, just like I've used the example, not if I'm not happy with my body, that doesn't mean I'm not perfect. I'm perfect just the way that I am. I love that guy in the mirror no matter what. I'm perfect based on the decisions that I've made in the past. Has me where I am today. It's, it's what I was talking about with the cake. Based on all the decisions and all the things that I've done, this is perfect right where I'm at. Now, I may say, but you know what? I'd like to adjust this a little bit. I'd like to get a little healthier. I'd like to make sure I can breathe a little better. Okay, I'm gonna make different decisions so that I can get different results. Nowhere in there do I stop being perfect along that path. 
because the person that I'm going to be tomorrow will be perfect based on the decisions I make today until I get to that point where I want to measure again. Does that make sense? You will always be perfect and the result will always be perfect based on the decision. That's why I keep talking about it when it comes to relationships, when people say, why do I attract the wrong people? No, you don't. You attract based on your thought process, where you are right now. People match up. You know, again, I use the interview process. Um, you're the hiring manager for a company. You're interviewing people. And if you get nothing but bad employees, you're going to be the person that's either going to get fired or they're going to have to retrain you because you're hiring bad people. But guess who's picking the people in your relationships? You. You're the hiring manager. So quit blaming other people and saying, it's no good men. There's bad women or, you know, women are like this. Folks, you're making the decision. Take responsibility. But first, understand there's nothing wrong with you. And that's the reason I'm having this conversation, because to me, until you realize that you're valuable, that you're perfect, that you're not a victim, and that you you have control of your destiny, until you get to that point, you're always looking for someone else to bail you out, to make you feel better, to make you feel you're significant. And you guys know that's the whole purpose of Self Love Monday is to get you to understand you are valuable. You are enough. I don't need the outside world to tell me that. Now, with that said, it's appreciated. <laughs> don't get me wrong. We all like it. it. It makes us feel good. We all want to get that pat on the back. We all want to be told that we're significant. We all want to, you know, people to, to tell us you've added value to my life, which helps us feel better. These videos I'm out there doing, I love when people say, hey, you know, I saw this video. This is what it did. For I mean, we all look forward to that. My point is, but if you need that in order for you to feel significant, then we have to deal with getting you back to where you love you and know that you're valuable. That other stuff that's icing on the cake, but that can't be the source of your self-esteem. So again, so I feel the same way. And again, I was talking about perfection. You guys are perfect, but I put failure in the same category when people talking about, I failed, I'm a failure. Um, quit allowing people to tell you that you failed. Quit allowing people to tell you you're a failure. Most importantly, quit telling yourself that. It's like telling a child, and we've all heard this example before, a child, when they can't walk, they're watching everybody around them walk. And it starts to hit them like, well, why can't I get around like everyone else? And I want to get around like everybody else. And they'll start pulling up on stuff and, and trying to crawl, and they'll do everything it takes. And you can see the kid fall and go, oh, they failed, which is our world is good for saying when things don't go right, you failed. No, you didn't. That child is is working towards walking. And so the thing is, they're going to do everything possible and keep making different efforts, quit, keep making different adjustments, which is what we're talking about. They're going to keep making different adjustments until one day they walk. I don't consider that failure along the way. The world will tell you that, but it's not. It's a part of the process to equip you so that when you do walk, you understand what it took in order to get there. You understood the effort. And for, for a lot of us, what we miss out is the lesson that was taught in that walk. Because everything has a lesson attached to it. Learning to walk, if most people remember that in everything that they do, again, they would never consider things failures. If they realize, I'm going to make it happen, whatever it takes. I'm going to fall down. I'm going to bump walls. You know, obstacles are going to get in my way. None of that matters. I'm not a failure. I'm not failing. I'm moving towards whatever it is I'm going after, and I'm not going to allow anything to stop that. And, and again, that's that's the, the, the reason for this conversation today is to, to get rid of the word failure out of your vocabulary. Quit letting the world tell. Matter of fact, um, that's one of the uh, things, and this is a little off, off topic, but somebody was uh, talking about... Um, What's the word we're, that, that we're talking about? Oh, he was talking about reaching your potential. And I guess that's kind of along the same line as failure and stuff. When people talk about because you have this potential and because you didn't accomplish that potential, 
you haven't reached it yet, then you failed at this point or you're a failure because you never got to that point. Well, what is potential and who is deciding what your potential is? Here's the key. Nobody as a human being will ever, ever, let me say it again, and you guys know I very rarely use the word ever. There's no human being that will ever reach their full potential. No human being. I don't care what pedestal you put them on, how great you are, there is no human being that will ever reach their whole, their, their entire potential. And that's good. Because it's kind of what we said. What would you strive for in life? What would there be to go achieve? What would there be to push you even more? As human beings, you know, as the saying goes, without hope, man perishes. Because you got to have something that you're here for. Something that's going to move you. Something that you can go pursue. So if you ever got to the point where you're reaching your full potential, trust me, you're in a casket. It'll never happen. And because we don't know anyone's potential, that's a bad conversation to me whenever you say someone hasn't reached their potential. You don't know their potential. You haven't reached your potential. It's the same thing. Quit judging other people. Either help them, or as, as you guys know, you, we've all been told, if you ain't got nothing good to say, keep it to yourself. So the key is, if you're going to help them to, to get to where they want to go, or if people are going to help you to get to where you want to go, cool. If not, they need to be quiet, right? So... Anyway, and, 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 and again, I know this is kind of, it's, it's a little off target, but it's the same conversation when I'm talking about potential um, as far as the failure and that kind of stuff, because that's really what people talk about when they talk about the same thing when, when they say about a person is um, has exceeded their potential. Like you'll talk about in sports, they'll say uh, a person exceeded their potential. Folks, that's not possible. That is impossible to exceed your potential. You may exceed what somebody else perceived of you or what they perceived you were capable of. Or maybe even you were the person who perceived less of yourself. And because of that, people say they overachieve. No such thing. You can never overachieve. You can get closer to what you're capable of that you sold yourself short on through programming, either through outside society or through your own pro. Well, of course it's your own programming because you allowed it to come in, but I'm saying, but they may be the one that gave you the programming, but you chose to accept it. So the key is, but you will never ever. So don't ever listen when somebody said, were you overachieved? Are you, you far exceeded what we expected? Because really that's what they're telling you. They didn't expect much because you went out and achieved you exceeded their expectations. That's their shortfall to think think that lowly of you. The key is for you not to think that lowly of you. Understand that you'll never, ever reach your full potential. And again, that's good because that's what keeps us driving in this world. But in terms of perfection, there's nothing wrong with you. You are perfect. Um, like I said, you're totally equipped to achieve everything that's going to cross your path. That's the beauty that we can adjust, you know, like we said before about the pause as human beings, the ability to, to pause, which means the ability to stop, think things through. That is one of those abilities that's what helps us become perfect because we can sit back when things occur and say, OK, let me analyze this. Let me think this through. through. What's another way I can adjust this? I said a long time ago and I totally agree and it just popped in my head again. If we learn to live like a GPS your life will be incredible. Think about it. GPS is not, if you go, out, if the GPS tells you to go in one direction, that's considered perfect according to what the GPS is telling you. It's the perfect instructions. If you get off target and turn left when it told you to turn right, the GPS does not call you a failure. The GPS does not look at you and say, you're not perfect. What does the GPS do? It just recalculates. And gives you a new direction to get right back on track to where it is you said you want to go. That's my point. That's the way we have to, 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 to look at our lives. When things happen, and they're going to, because we can't perceive them, 
we can make the world operate and cooperate with us. And that's a good thing uh, because, again, some things happen better than what we plan. So we don't want to be in control of all that. We do want to control the things we can't control. And the rest of it, and, and, and that's like the emotional stuff. We got to be able to control that stuff um, in, in terms of how we respond to the things that happen. But the outside world, that stuff is going to always happen. It's going to always cross our path. Let's move forward. That's what makes us perfect because we can stop, pause, think it through, move forward. And we never fail. Right? You guys get me? So... Again, I just wanted to, to address that today. Uh, it's a topic that I've, 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 I've been hearing a lot in terms of people talking about um, the failure and also the uh, people reaching their full potential. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's I, again, I use the, the basketball analogy. If you're talking about people reaching their potential, um, who is it? Uh, you look at people like uh, Clay Thompson, and, and uh, oh man, I don't know why my mind is going. Steph Curry uh, went blank there for a second. How their shooting has changed basketball, where these guys are almost pulling up from half court, where you have to watch them and guard them because they start to pull up almost at half court and shoot it. Folks, do you understand how many players are starting to do that now? That's pretty much almost stepping over half court and pulling up. In the in the in the old olden days, that wasn't there. Did they have the potential to do that? Of course they did. Mankind has always had the potential. That's why I said when people talk about people's potential, we have potentials that none of us even know exist. So to ever sit there and, and badmouth a person because they haven't reached their potential, none of us ever will. Because we have no idea what we're capable of. All right. I think I drove that home. <laughs> Hopefully you got some value out of this. Please, if you have some feedback on that, uh, please uh, get back to me and let me know. This and any other topic, I love hearing from you guys getting feedback. Because as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Now, for those of you that we talk on a relationship um, Thursday, I look forward to talking to you guys uh, on Thursday. And then for those that we do Self Love Monday, I look forward to, to, to talking to you again on next Monday and give me some feedback on certain topics that you want for me to uh, cover. I enjoy doing this. I love sharing, giving my input. And again, you, you guys know it. It's like I keep saying, these are my perspectives. It doesn't make it right, wrong. They're my opinions, my perspectives. Take the stuff in there that's good and use it. The stuff that's not, don't. Nobody has all the answers for you and they're not supposed to. Because how would you grow if there's only one source individual to get all your answers from? Then, then you wouldn't need anyone else. And that's not the way this world was created. It's not, I mean, it's for us to, to, to deal with each other and work with each other. And therefore, you can't give all the answers to one person. Not only that, because they ain't going to be here forever. <laughs> and can you imagine everybody trying to get the answer from one person? But anyway, um, I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Uh, run over to, again, um, my video series at ronsimplifiedmyers.online. Again, that's ronsimplifiedmyers.online. I have a, key, uh, a discount, special release discount where you basically get uh, all three video series pretty much almost the same price that I uh, that you would pay for one. And again, it's, it's the due release uh, discount. I want to get it in as many hands as possible. So get over there, take advantage of it while it's being offered. And I'll look forward to talking to you guys soon. And again, remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.